for a few weeks now in our second reading uh, on the weekend masses. We've been quietly listening to chapter 8 of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, a beautiful uh, chapter. And I often think that that second reading, uh, which is quite often from St. Paul, is a reading which gets quite overlooked quite a bit uh, during these Sunday Masses because it doesn't connect um, with neither the first reading nor the Gospel. It sort of stands uh, on its own. And yet, over these last few weeks, we have heard some beautifully beautiful meditations from St. Paul on the experience of living life in the Holy Spirit. Over these last few weeks, if you go back in your missals or delve into the recycling, over the last few weeks, St. Paul has systematically taken us from the starting point of the Christian journey, from the moment of our baptism, that transformation which occurs at that baptism moment, to a life fully immersed in the Spirit. And this is quite a journey which all of us go on, a journey which isn't sort of um, like a motorway, perhaps it's often quite like the A48 where it sort of windles and weaves in and out, and St. Paul reflects upon that. If we go back to the second reading at the start of July, back to the 13th Sunday in ordinary time, we see how St. Paul sets the scene for this. He says that when we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. In other words, he's saying that at that moment of baptism, which for so many of us is a moment set in history so long ago, a death takes place, a dying to the old self and a rising to with the new self, to a life in Christ. As the rite of baptism says, uh, just after the baptism, we become a new creation. To become this new creation then means something. They're not simply empty words of the baptism rite. And St. Paul expands upon what this means in the following week, the next week, the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time, t telling us that the Spirit of God has made his home in you. And isn't this what, what, isn't this what was part of what Deacon Philip said last week? He used quite a wonderful picture for us. He described how that we become tabernacles of the divine, if you remember from last week, such a, an evocative image for us to meditate upon, bringing this, these sentiments of St. Paul alive. The Spirit continues to dwell in us, whether we do choose that spiritual path that leads to union with him, leads to that deep encounter with him, or whether we do slide into that unspiritual way, perhaps taking the A48 road around. And if we look through chapter 8 of the letter to the Romans, St. Paul reflects upon this, goes back and forth, fleshing this out, bringing uh, this conflict which often takes place uh, to the surface. Our baptisms mean we have become a new creation, says the right. To express this in another way then from another part of St. Paul's letters to the Corinthians, he says that we've been bought at a price. And of course, the reality of all this means that we are not alone in our endeavors for that spiritual life, for that spiritual way, in our endeavors to become one body, one spirit in Christ. If we try to advance our life of faith and discipleship, our spiritual journey on our own and on our own merits, it'll never really get us very far. And this is where we pick up what St. Paul uh, is saying in today's second reading. The Spirit comes to help us, he says. And I think that today's second reading provides us with a wonderful reality check that the Lord is with us 
the Lord works with us as we strive to meet with him, as we strive to have that personal and transformational encounter with him. For when we cannot choose words in order to pray properly, the Spirit himself expresses a plea in a way that could never be put into words. And those wonderful words for us. Doesn't it provide us in our own imperfect humanity with the wonderful consolation that it's not about us? The Catechism of the Catholic Church, a great resource of the last uh, decade or so, says, that, says this, that the life in the Holy Spirit fulfills the vocation of humanity, that our life in the Holy Spirit fulfills the vocation of humanity. I invite you as we begin this summer holiday period to perhaps pick up those Bibles, to perhaps download the Bible app onto your phone and rediscover the treasures that St. Paul has been telling us and reflecting upon with us over these last few weeks. Because as the quote from that catechism says, what St. Paul has to say takes us to the very core, the very heart of our vocation as Christians, to the very core of our identity, of what it means to live our lives in Christ. Let us continue to pray for a renewed outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon our parish, that we may be truly alive in that Spirit, and that we may be faithful to what God is asking of us. Amen.